for so many people, the, their why and their entrepreneurial journey is family, you know, more time with family. And then so often they end up spending less time with their family because they're so focused on the business. In these situations and so many other ones, we're able to bring that intentionality back to remind people really of their why and how to make the most of their why and how to do that as well. And um, he said the same thing as being a dad, it's so easy to get caught up with the day-to-day -day grind and uh, just doing something like a retreat where you actually focus your time on your family could be phenomenal. We believe in intermittent tech fasting. You know, yeah. we all know that intermittent fasting, you know, you've helped us with that for cleaning out the organs, revitalization. When we're having this focus one-on-one -on -one time, our phones are not invited. There's no social media, there's no texting, there's no email, there's no calls. Jamie has an emergency you know, text on for the babysitter. Um, but, but we found that when we're having these intimate times, so many times the phone gets in the way. Everybody, it's Reagan here at Unreasonable Health, and it's so great to have you guys on the show today. Um, I've got in store for you a couple of great friends who are also clients of, of ours here at East West Health, Jim and Jamie Shields. And you're going to want to listen to this because what they do is they help people just like you create deeper, more connected, more meaningful relationships with spouses and children. So they can have the family they always imagine. The great thing about Jim and Jamie is they walk the talk. Uh, I've seen them in action with their family. I, I, I know their kids. And uh, these guys, not only are they just amazing humans, but they speak all over the world. Um, they ignite people to enjoy a very vibrant family life um, and grow business as well. And so they've got a book called the family board meeting. I'm going to recommend each one of you go pick that up. Just do it right now. Uh, you won't regret it. Um, and they, they have, a, a, an ability to transform families. They host retreats, which we'll talk about today. They're also successful real estate investors. And I know a lot of you are, are, are in real estate and in that world. And so they're going to show you how you can just maximize what you're doing to enjoy these 18 summers with your family. So Jim and Jamie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Reagan. Great Good to see you. Here. Yeah, thanks, bud. So, so every time I get a chance to talk to you guys, we always have uh, fascinating conversations. And so thanks for taking the time today. And, and so this 18 summers concept is, you know, from what you guys are doing is basically like we have kids, maybe we get one shot at this. We got 18 summers essentially with our kids. What are you guys doing to maximize this? What are some of the core principles of, of your work? That's a great question. Yeah. So, you know, we heard 85% of the time in which you'll spend with your children happens in those first 18 years. And of course, if you do those first 18 years, right, they keep coming back. So our boys are out of their 18 summers and we've been in Costa Rica the last handful of weeks. And this is the first time that they didn't travel with us the whole time. And so they came back and they visited because they remember the rhythms that we have here and the fun that we have here. And they really enjoy tethering to those islands of consistency within the family. And then they go back to their lives, you know? And so it's kind of that intentionality around those first 18 years of making the most of the time you have and then just knowing that you're creating a foundation for all of the years that follow that. Mm, I love that because, you know, that's uh, some, still some of my favorite times are when I get to go spend time with my family and my, my siblings. We, I come from a family of five. You guys have five kids as well. And uh, it's really fun when we get together. And now the grandkids, I think there's like 35 grandkids. Because, wow. <laughs> so you, you know, we, we, uh, we go big apparently, but uh, it makes for, and now we've got great grandkids in the family, but it's just made for some of the most magical moments uh, ever. And, yeah. and so, and you guys, what, you know, some of the things that you've done with your kids is pretty exceptional, but like your two oldest boys, they both have businesses. They I mean, do. They do. I think that you just get them around. We call it the fun uncle, fun aunt syndrome. So I could start to talk to them about 
peptides, right? What do I know about peptides? I go to you. But if I'm like, hey, my buddy um, Reagan, who crashed his dirt bike when he was your age, he knows about peptides. They're like, oh, well, let me talk to Reagan. Reagan's cool. I like him. So we always try to get our kids at young ages around fun uncles and fun aunts. We call them like, you'd be a fun uncle. You know, Jamie's been a fun aunt to lots of people because that hierarchy with your own kids, sometimes it's hard to listen. And I think with our kids, we just got them around entrepreneurs at a young age and their families. And so they took advice, not just from us, but more from that less hierarchy, the fun uncle or fun aunt. And that just kind of bled off on them. And and here, here they go on their way of doing their own businesses that we did not pick. We did not start. We did not uh, initially finance. Uh, so it's it's nice to see them taking the initiative. Yeah, but, and and so the way they've taken the initiative is they've met people who are inspirational to them, and then they've said, "All right, I'm going to learn how to do a fishing charter, <clears throat> for example," which is pretty impressive. Um, I like that concept, and and that's actually that's true. I've, I've never really identified as the fun uncle or fun aunt, but. Um, but I've done that in so many different cases, um, where like one of my sons loves MMA and, and one of my best friends is like, a an MMA fighter is super flexible. He's got all the kicks, he can do all the moves. And so when Dan comes over, it's like my son and him are sparring the whole time and he's teaching him moves. And then he's now it's, yeah, I think over the years, it's inspired, uh, my son Dom to, to, you know, take it more seriously. And so he's now at a gym and he's hoping to fight, uh, in the amateur, uh, level when he turns 18, which is in like just a few months. So, so yeah, that's the fun uncle. That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah. And we were also introduced to the idea of whatever your children are passionate about, dump gasoline on it, strike a match and just let it, let it go, you know, just let them follow their interests instead of us putting ours on them. And at an early age, our oldest always wanted to go fishing. And if he had money, he would use it to buy the nicest, you know, fishing rods when he would do a board meeting, which is something, um, which is the book that we just recently released. Um, he, he wanted to go fishing and fishing's not either of our passion, but we would go along with him because he was so passionate about it. And then fast forward, he found a mentor in one of our friends, sons, he found a mentor that he trained under in the Florida Keys to learn about fishing. And then at the very earliest age, he possibly could get a license. He already had all of his hours of internship. He had all of the knowledge. He took all of the tests and he, and he was able to become a captain, but it's because we allowed that to unfold or we saw it and we said, okay, whatever we can do to support that interest of his, he can do. Um. And, and, uh, what do you guys do if the, I mean, do all of your kids have pretty defined passions or have you had to kind of help like move them in a certain direction? You know, I think that that is such a, a question of concern for so many entrepreneurs. Like they got to know at age 11 or late to age 12, they got to know that is, that's that annoying overachieving entrepreneur that we are wanting the best for our kids. You yeah. have to be patient. I can tell you, Alden identified it right away. Leland, you know, I think he's, he has, you know, Leland, he's yeah. one of your clients, but he, he identified much later. But one of the things that was kind of funny in our book, the family board meeting, I talk about this story where Leland wanted to overcome his fear of heights. And this, you know, our initial copy of this book came out 10 years ago. And there's a story of him and I drop fly, uh, climbing the lighthouse in St. Augustine, this really high lighthouse. And, little six-year-old afraid of heights. We're stopping at each land. And it's this whole story that's in our book. And when we just re-released the book, our, our editor said, you know, he's asking for the updates on our family. He's like, wait, your son who was afraid of heights, right? That's Leland who had this big thing. I'm like, yeah. He's like, he has a gutter cleaning business where he's on roofs all day now. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, look how that works. So <laughs> look, sometimes what we're seeing and he loves entrepreneurship. And we Very just, entrepreneur. one of the things that he was most afraid of, he's like, yeah, I'll get up on the roof. Like he's up on roofs, you know, all day, every day in Florida. Um, so it, they don't identify, but what I found, if you will give them space, it will happen. Mm. Don't make them lazy. Don't allow them to be, um, you know, you're not going to do the push-ups for them, but if you give them space and a little bit of guardrails, they'll 
they'll step up, I think. Yeah, and it's been interesting to watch Leland because he would have always told you he wanted to be, he was going to college and he wanted to be a scientist. He was making all sorts of crazy stuff since he was really little. But but then I also think like, okay, he always was really outgoing and charismatic, very much like Jim. Like he could sell you sand on the beach, you know, and he <laughs> liked, even though he was self-conscious about performing, he was so good at performing. And so there's like these layers of things that now, I mean, he's a door-to-door salesman and he absolutely loves it. Like he loves to put on the sale and he loves to role play and train his employees on how to do the sale. And, wow. and then he also is performing in a, in a local group that he does once a month performances on stage. And so it's just really neat to see little snippets along the way where you're like, Oh, that makes sense. You know? And, and, and we couldn't have said, Hey, you have to go to this performing arts because we see a glimmer in you and you have to do that. You know, it would be a little bit of a different received, I guess. Yeah. That, and that makes sense. And the great thing about it, I mean, you guys have not only inspired your kids to do awesome things and, and eventually it sounds like they will find their passion. Um, that's uh, my daughter is, uh, my boys definitely, they have very specific passions and drives in life. My daughter is a bit looser, you know, she's interested in a lot of different things but her responsibility level is crazy. Like, you know, she, she's getting ready to go to college. She got a new job. And I was like, Oh, I didn't even know you're changing jobs. She's like, Oh yeah, I got it. I got this job at, at, at this, uh, fresh market because they have one in St. George. So when I go to college, I can just train. So she's already got a job when she's down and call. I mean, that's the, <clears throat> excuse me. That's the caliber. She is. It's interesting to see you know, my boys, you, I kind of have to put them, you know, put some guardrails up just a little bit. So they don't go too crazy, but, um, <laughs> so, so fun to be a parent, like, and, and you guys did it right because you removed one of the big stressors that most parents have, which is the finances. You know, I don't know, um, growing up how it was for you, but when it came to decisions that were made in my family, I was always like, can we afford this? Can we not? And you guys have said, well, let's just create, um, let's, let's make money secondary in the family and let's create some passive income with real estate so that we can actually have more family time and we can go to Costa Rica for the summers or whenever you guys go there. But wh- whose idea was that? And when did you guys take up this project to say, hey, we want to get enough passive income where we don't, we don't need to work a nine to five job. Yeah, I had that started way before Jamie and I even met probably for both of us, because we both were in financially strapped families. Mm -hmm. And and one of the biggest compliments we ever got was from our fellow friend who introduced us, Mike Keenings. He said, Jim, for years, I thought you and Jamie were trust fund kids because he didn't talk about money much. That wasn't nothing. We don't hyper focus (laughs) on it or stress over it, it, but we work hard. And it couldn't be further from the truth. We actually had to help supplement the generation before us, our parents hmm. from our things. And I think that it just came to me going, I watched my father struggle his entire life with money. He had a lot of things he wanted to do and he wasn't able to do. And I didn't want that to be a deterrent for us. So I said, I know if we can, if we can fund our values and our adventures that we can have a legendary family life. So it started way before Jamie and I even met, but we had this shared vision. It was very clear when we came together. Yes, we want to be entrepreneurial. Yes, we want to make money, but it's the how. We also want to educate our children alternatively. We want to be um, available for their schedule. And we want to, you know, and that's something that, again, separately, um, as I was building alternative schools and programming, that was solely to be for the adventure, you know, so that my, our children could have, that alternative education that I could be on the same schedule as them for summers and breaks and pickups and drop offs and all of that kind of thing. So always designing our life around what fits our family and the values in which we hold close and now being able to fund the adventure and continue that as the legacy, I guess. And you'll find there's certain things when I just started to look, Reagan, I love restaurants. I've gone and eaten them, eaten at good restaurants with you before, but for restaurant owners, Thank you for what you do, but you got to work night, weekends, and holidays. You know yeah. what I like to work at least? Thank Nights, you. weekends, and holidays. And I also know with our lifestyle, the, the business that I wanted to go into or the businesses or the investments, I wanted to be able to travel. I didn't want to be 
um, you know, stuck in one space. Um, and so, so I looked at different opportunities and real estate kept coming back. It was seven out of 10 millionaires in the U.S. made their money in real estate. It had mm-hmm. a tangibility that made sense to me. Um, and, and I saw people much older than me that were, I never met anyone who bought property in the early seventies. that was disappointed that they did. And I thought, yeah. okay, I'm going to be old and I'm halfway there now, hopefully only a third of the way there with Reagan's help, but he swept <laughs> help. Just thought if we can get into that and follow some some principles of real estate investing, we're not we're not uh, you know a, a Buffett family, but we're able to do things that me and Jamie's family's generation before never could have dreamed of, and that's wow. what it's about. It's the how. we want to make money, but we want to be able to go out to you at a drop of a hat. If our son gets in a car accident, we're there. Right? We can be there for a week. If we want to be in Costa Rica for five weeks, and sure, I still work. But I'm on the beach every morning and every afternoon with our kids. And if I take a break for coffee midday with Jamie uh, or a lunch, we can do that. So it was the how. And real estate kind of had that ability uh, mm. for us. Yeah, no, I think it's beautiful. And it's it's awesome because you train other people on how to do the same. Yeah, yeah. So we help people build real estate portfolios. Um, I mean, as you know now, build to rent. We build new construction rentals in Florida which I could go through so many reasons, but we don't have enough time on this podcast, but going through 24 years of the ups, downs and sideways, you know, we were able to niche down on how do we make things less headache for us and anyone we work with and more predictable, more sustainable, you know, better odds of results moving forward and building new construction properties in in Florida has been a, a high demand with a lot less moving parts for the investors we work with. So it's been a great thing for everyone. Man. Well, that's exciting. And and the thing I love about it is uh, there's a connection to your why with it that goes beyond, you know, I, I, there's a lot of real estate investors out there that, you know, they're just looking for the ROI. They're just looking for that, you know, the next, uh, you know, popular thing, but um, you guys have done it for uh, the right reasons, not only to help yourself and your own families, but how many families have you guys helped? And maybe you could share some some stories about people who you've inspired and people who, you know, now can actually be the parents that they want to be because they're not, uh, you know, chained up to their job. That's great. We we uh, estimate that we've helped three hundred thousand families, and with the launch of the book just last week, hitting Whoa. number one Google and top um, on Amazon as well. We're and we're, we think that we're. Uh, hopefully for the Wall Street journalist, but um, we anticipate and we expect that to reach 2 million. So that's our, that's our hope. Um, Through our family education and real estate um, offerings, we're at over 300 and I think the goal is 2 million. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. That, that's helpful. And, and share us like some, some stories. I know on your website, it's incredible. I'd recommend everyone go to 18summers.com and you can just see like the, you know, like you guys have done such a phenomenal job, but maybe you could share some, some of your own kind of case studies or people you've, you've helped. Yeah, you know, first who I'm thinking of is someone who's right on the website. We're not looking at it now, but we just referred him to you because he's out in your area. And he had yeah. been a real estate investor in Utah for years. The numbers started to get too difficult out there. He came to Florida met up with us, toured our stuff, has brought his wife. She asked a lot of questions. Coincidentally, Jamie and her became friends. And we had babies together last year. Like we're we're all things. We're vacationing together next month. Yeah. So they they became clients and then friends, kind of similar to our path. Uh, They shared they wanted to be able to have more time with their family, self-educate them in certain ways that we didn't get as kids. And so he went in and started buying properties with us, then sharing it with his own network and they bought properties. Uh, And it's put him in a, I wouldn't say a self-retire, a semi-retirement, but it definitely in a space where he's having for his wife more time than he has ever with his family. Um, And also being able to follow in our coattails because their children are, you know, averaging, you know, about half the age of our oldest. So they're kind of following the path. So, you know, Adam, that's helped for, I know Tom, who's one of my favorite as well, retired Air Force, um, was able, he had his, you know, with my father, I went through that surgery of uh, donating a kidney. That's a big deal. 
Yeah. Well, as I said, said, Hey, I want to buy rentals. I'm wanting to retire in a few years from my mortgage company. You know, my wife has had some kidney problems. Well, four, fast forward five years, the money he was making from our rentals, he did retire and he was there to be with his wife at the Mayo Clinic, who I was actually able to give a contact with because a few places, you know, I'd have a contact at East West Health and the Mayo Clinic. Those are my two. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I was able to help him. He was there for his wife's entire recovery and they're living a great life. Um, and he sent us a picture the day of our daughter's adoption of him saying, hey, just retired. I'm up in my plane that your rentals are paying for right now. Thank you. <laughs> so, so it's really cool when we're able to bring that bridge for people to, because for so many people, the, their why and their entrepreneurial journey is family, you know, more time with family, more uh, legacy for family. And then so often they end up spending less time with their family because they're so focused on the business mm. or they have shortened attention spans or, short, you know, things just aren't as intentional as they had hoped it would be for the family. And it's really nice that in these situations and so many other ones, we're able to bring that intentionality back to remind people really of their why and how to make the most of their why and how to do that as well. Yeah. Well, and it, and it's so important because that's the, the fuel that drives it. And one of the other fascinating things that you guys do Talk about talented. Um, you guys also host retreats, family retreats. And uh, I'm super excited about the November uh, event coming up. Um, I'll be participating in that one. But tell us about the retreats. What um, what do people do and, and what's the purpose behind them? Yeah, the retreats were, were really a, a, a very organic brainchild of Jamie and I where we wanted to get our boys who were at the time six and eight around other entrepreneur families. Now they're 20 and 18. Um, and we just started to get together groups of entrepreneur families that were like-minded, share values. And we wanted to, in an inspired environment, you know, strengthen the relationship and together mastermind the lessons not taught in school. That was it. That was the mm. theme. And by being able to do that, I know for our own boys who teens are not shy to tell you when you do something wrong, <laughs> but they're kind of shy to tell you when you've done something right. You know, and you know, both Alden and Leland now, they've said those five years of retreats were such a pivotal part of our life. Wow. And to have that time, the fun uncle effect, going to incredible places, having these experiences with other families, learning and having the mastermind thing affect at such a young age that, you know, the three of us didn't get to much later in life. It really yeah. opens their mind what's possible. And it's amazing, you know, all, seven-year-old Alden or 12-year-old Alden may not have been able to conceptualize, I'm going to make a lot of money being a captain of a boat one day. And then I can take that money and invest it in real estate or whatever other business I want and make more money while I'm on the boat. Like he, they, like do food, nobody, you can't conceptualize some of this stuff, but when we sit in mastermind rooms with other people, like yourself or some of our other friends that are doing things that, that you couldn't think of as a child, like, wait, there's a job for that or, Oh, there, you know, it just really expands what becomes possible. And I think that it's such a positive effect when you're with other like-minded, similar core valued families, and you're all putting your intentionality on what matters most. And it is truly a connective experience first and foremost with you and your child, you and your children and your spouse, but then also that uh, collective of you're all there really to deepen and strengthen your most important relationships. And I think, you know, returning back to that entrepreneurial why, sometimes the strongest of men or women who walk in thinking they don't have an apology to give, or they're just here because their wife made them come or whatever. Those are the ones that have the biggest breakthrough of like, oh, I forgot. Mm -hmm started this journey. I forgot how in love I am with my wife. I forgot how much fun these children are. And it's just such a great way to be um, reminded and reconnected Reconnected, yeah. and have a heck of a lot of fun. Like we have a ton of fun. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I was just um, hanging out with uh, one of my best friends in Brooklyn. Who's also like the fun uncle, you know, he's um, and uh, when we were there, I said, how do you live in this place? Cause it's so busy, you know? And he's like, well, uh, you know, he said, if, if I don't leave and go travel and just like get off the boat, essentially get off the Island in Manhattan, um, it can get pretty darn overwhelming. And, uh, he said the same thing. He's a new dad now. 
And um, he said the same thing as being a dad. It's so easy to get caught up with the day-to-day grind and uh, just doing something like a retreat where you actually focus your time on your family um, could be phenomenal. And, and so do you guys host these every year or what's the cadence like? Well, the cadence, first one in Costa Rica, first one in Costa Rica, we've people have been wanting to come down to our, our life down here for a long time. Yeah. We used to host twice a year in the States, but we thought these retreats are about showing people our life and they like the sense of adventure that we have and what we've done. So we've decided to move them down here. So twice a year moving forward, we've been off for five years. We were busy with real estate. We wanted to be with our own family. The pandemic hit and we canceled a bunch. We kept having yeah. babies. We kept having babies. <laughs> yeah, <Now> cute ones. <laughs> yep, you've held them. You've held them. And so we just, we figured it was time to start offering these. The, the one thing that we always heard was, you know, we've been to, them with you before great business masterminds and so many people would say gosh what i learned here was so important this is so pivotal it's so in- important how do i get my family involved that's just yeah. a common question so people usually tap us on the shoulder and say hey these people want to get their family more involved with their personal development the the journey of financial intelligence and entrepreneurship you know relationship skills alternative learning alternative health okay, let's get our kids involved in a fun and experiential way with other families so they don't feel like they're just isolated, but they're doing it collectively in a group. And that's what our retreats are about. And, and gosh, they're fun. They're just, there's just such a highlight of our year. And for, for spoiled reasons, we're, we're helping introduce our children to lifelong friends. You know, they have friends, the boys, Australia, France, all over the world, you know, just from this three days. Man. What was a cool reflection from (laughs) one of our first retreats with the boys? Uh, Maybe they were eight and 10 or something. And um, they said, and you're like, oh, what's your takeaway? You know, we go around with like, whatever is your biggest takeaway of the time. And they, their biggest takeaway was that um, they didn't know other people were weird, like their parents. (laughs) So I'd like to, you know what I mean? Because we do, like entrepreneurs, like we live a little bit of a kooky life. You know, there's, we think right. differently. We think like everything. We and take so, peptides, like weird stuff. Yeah, like we, <laughs> we do injections nightly. I know. <laughs> but, um, and so it was, they were, they just thought, wow, there's other, there's other people like you out in the world. And somehow it just made them more comfortable with who their family was and how their family functioned. And it made them more confident that yeah. this was, like not just a crazy way of living, but maybe like a super productive and successful way of living and an authentic mm-hmm. way of living. So it was just a, that was really funny as one of their first takeaways. I, I love that. I'm not surprised though, because uh, that it, it's, there's no, nothing quite like um, being in an entrepreneurial family because of the things change really quickly. And there's excitement. There's just new adventures that, you know, I didn't have growing up. You guys didn't have that growing up. And, and so you guys are doing amazing things, but what is it that keeps the spark between you two um, going? Cause you guys, you know, still passionately in love. You guys just, uh, you, you guys seem to have a really great, uh, you know, just great vibes together, great marriage, but how do you guys nurture each other? I mean, I'd like to say we, uh, I forget, it was a friend of ours said, you know, you have to love your wife, but it's really important to like her. I like, I really like my wife and mm-hmm. I really like Jamie. I'm super attracted to her on many levels, but I really like her. Like, and I think one of the reasons we like, we naturally have this excitement to learn new things. Mm-hmm. You know, there's never a chance where it's like, again, to go, hey, I was just in, in Dallas and this guy Reagan read my blood charts and I'm all fucked up, but he's going to fix me. And you need to look at this. And this is so cool. And then I'm like, uh, oh my gosh, I knew you were all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. <laughs> so, so it was, but, but, and Jamie's like, oh, I've been reading about it. Peptides, let's do this. And I'm, and then hey, I'm comparing Reagan, his past, but it, it, there's just a lot we, of, we synergy. just get, ex- we have this adventure, adventure synergy to us. We love learning together. We love experiencing. I, I think we could say, I'd rather see her on stage getting an applause than me. Um, you know, and, and I think yeah. people have 
I, I cannot, neither one of us, and I know this has been meant as a compliment, people like, oh, that, that group, they're a power couple. And Jamie and I are like, we don't ever want to be a power couple because power couples have power struggles. There's no power mm-hmm. there. Like, we're adventure friends and we're yeah. very actually attracted to each other, very active, intimately, which I think is super important. And, and I think we just share this desire to keep learning and, and adventure and growing together. Really? Yeah. We, we start, we do a date night a week, every week as well. That's, and I that's think a foundation for that's sure. That's huge yeah. because even if we had the same core values, even if we both like to adventure, even if we like to learn, you know, like there's all these things that even if we did all these things, but we didn't spend time together one-on-one, One-on-one. we would lose, you know, when would we have an opportunity to de- like to download all of the things we've learned, or when would we have an opportunity to, you know, see each other as an intimate partner versus just a roomie? You know, there's certain certain rhythms that we've built into our relationship that show us how much we really like each other. And so it's things like date night. And on date night, we we have a deck of cards that we developed also through this process. And it's called date night with a question. And so each week we ask at least one powerful question, um, not not anything not, about the children or the house or the pets or work or anything. Today. Yeah. Not allowed to just, what are nice. we doing on Yeah, yeah none, of none of that. But so just deeper, more connecting questions. And, you know, I never leave a date night regretting who I'm there with. You know, sometimes, and I, I say this very honestly, there's moments in which we're getting ready for date night. And I know neither one of us are really feeling it. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we're tense, you know, and, yeah. and so quickly in that date night, we enter into that space and I'm like, Oh, that's why he's here. Like, Oh, yeah. I really like this guy. And to get back to our principles that you asked before, right. And, you know, some of the principles are our family board meeting and our date night. But the question is one-on-one time is absolutely key. For mm-hmm. me and Jamie, for me and Sammy, for me, for Jamie and Alden, all of our family, we we believe you separate the parts to strengthen the whole. So one on one time wow. is extremely, very important. Each of the children have one on one time with me and with Jamie, um, and then coupled with that one on one time, which is a conversation you and I and Jamie had recently, is we believe in intermittent tech fasting. You know, yeah. we all know that intermittent fasting. You know, you've helped us with that for cleaning out the organs, revitalization. When we're having this focus one-on-one time, our phones are not invited. There's no social media. There's no texting. There's no email. There's no calls. Jamie has an emergency, you know, text on for the babysitter. Um, but but we found that when we're having these intimate times, so many times the phone gets in the way. And I'm the most, my ADD has ruined the moment, Reagan, of taking that text that could have waited, answering a phone call, you know, getting on social media. Media, which, as you pointed out, you know, early in conversations, no one really has to do <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> so those are two huge principles. And I think when you have that one on one time and you've taken the distractions of photos away, I think Jamie and I have gotten really good at doing sincere compliments and, you know, genuine apologies. You know, mm. we, wow. we apologize. it is not normal for the entrepreneur, at least me. You know, North Jersey boy, stubborn that to admit faults, to apologize, but man, a sincere apology goes a long way. And also when we started to work with these family groups, you know, we found that a lot of the kids were, we were meaning to, but we weren't actually getting to those genuine compliments. A lot of kids were overdue for some real genuine compliments. And I was like, gosh, if these smart, good people are forgetting to do that, maybe we're forgetting to do it for each other and our own children. So we always have to make sure we're, we're slowing down enough to realize that and say those things. Mm. And, and um, yeah, you guys were on our retreat. Yeah. You and Jamie did a weekend getaway a couple of weeks ago. And it sounds like that's a part of your routine too. How do you schedule? Do you, do you structure one-on-one times? Like, you know, that you're going to be hanging out with Leland, for example, at a certain time, or how do you guys, what, what do you do to make sure that happens? I'll, that which you schedule gets done. You have yep. to schedule. Okay. So you're a big believer in that. Yeah. And for Jim and I, we definitely, so we have two anniversaries. One's like a secret anniversary where we got married, but didn't tell anybody. And then six months later is when we actually had a wedding. And so those are our like for sure two times out of the year that we go away. And we just, 
we just have, we do absolutely nothing except for just like have fun together. We do like spa day together. We do the beat. Like we just really Mm -hmm. laugh a lot. We stay up really late and watch stupid shows, which we never even turn on a TV at home. And so like we eat meals in the bed. We like, we just do all sorts of irresponsible fun things. Just the two of us having, having a good time. Um, And then we often, we often go away. We, We try, we do once a quarter at least. And so for example, it was his, birthday last month. And so we bought tickets to, um, the grateful dead on Colorado. So we'll go for a few days and do that together. And so get my hippie roots out and we'll, we'll be <laughs> try That's so good. I'm glad I referenced grateful dead earlier. I didn't well, know, I mean, it, no, but I had like, a feeling. There's a lot of things that were like, I know. <laughs> so we always go to like music together. That's another thing that's really important to us. Anytime there's a concert, we're like, yep, we're going there together because something about that, we know, like, if we could go into a concert pissed at each other. And by the end, we're like dancing and holding hands. You know, you have to remember those things which really connect you and bring you back to the core of why you're there doing this stuff together anyways. And there's, there is a, a simple secret of why we, and we can say this in front of anyone, we rarely miss date night. Rarely. It mm. is like big has to come up to move that. It's weekly. But the secret, Reagan, the simple secret is same bad time, same bad channel. We just, yeah. we, we, the week goes so fast. We used to, oh, can we try to do a Tuesday? Let's try to squeeze it in Friday. Oh, right. Eight night is every Wednesday, 5.30 to 8.30. Every Wednesday, 5.30 to 8.30. If you're like us and still have young kids, the babysitter knows they're on schedule every Wednesday. I don't schedule podcasts, investor dinners, you yeah. know, nothing else. We, we just know Wednesday to 5.30, 5.30 to 8.30 is our time. And then by having that rhythm, we can, we can you know, live off that beat and it keeps things in line. The same thing goes for like, we do family dinners on Sundays. So like my folks and his folks and the neighbor, whomever needs a place, but to have dinner, but for sure, you know, our parents come um, and it's such a rhythm that our daughter, Maggie, you know, we've been in Costa Rica the last handful of weeks. Maggie said last night during prayer, she said, has grandma been lonely on Sundays? And she's eight years old, but like somehow she <laughs> knows Sundays is family, so important. like family dinner and that grandma probably looks forward to that. And that's one of our rhythms. And, and that's what's so cool when you get intentional is you create rhythms around. It's not just like going down, you know, it's not just us implementing board meetings and this focus time one-on-one with our children, but we realize it's every relationship. It's my, Jim and I, it's us with our parents, it's us with friends, you know, and it just, it brings a greater intentionality. And I think that as we instill these things in our children, like Maggie's going to grow up and hopefully invite her parents over for dinner every Sunday and then yeah. have that time. You know, and and I, insist that her husband brings her on a date once a week. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yes. Really yeah. So That's we're teaching large. for building not just our own family, but hopefully our grandchildren's experience as well. Man. Well, and, and, uh, the intentionality that, that goes, uh, Dan Sullivan, he says the person with the biggest intention wins, you know, uh, our, our mutual, uh, mentor there, but, um, I think that's huge. And then what do you do on the board meetings? What's that all about? It sounds a little, little intimidating. No, see, that's, that was the joke of it. It's, it's <laughs> important day with each one of our children every quarter. You know, most board meetings, like if East West has a board meeting every quarter, you probably, you know, bring the team back together, reunite them and look to the next 90 days. Oh, and that's what yeah, we have some fun. Yeah. When I, when I, had, you know, first came into our oldest son's lives at seven and five, I wanted to be a good dad. And I was a busy entrepreneur with ADD. So mm-hmm. I said, Order, I'm going to take a day out to be with them one-on-one. And that's how the board meeting strategy had it. So they pick the day. I go all in. They build it. My phone is off. And mm-hmm. that's it. One-on-one, intermittent tech fasting, a day of their choice. And we have some time at the end to talk. And that simple framework is now used by thousands of families worldwide. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands, which wow. is great. So it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of, and Dan Sullivan's been very good to us about this because he loves the entrepreneur family and wants it to stay intact. Those days, Reagan, you know, I stepped into some pretty big shoes. You know, Jamie had, had an incredible, uh, you know, a fight for, for protection and, you know, after divorcing and, you know, getting full custody of these young boys and meeting her a few years later, 
it was it was a big position to step into with these beautiful little boys that had trust issues, and rightfully so. And those days in that first year, I mean, it's in our book, mm-hmm. the changes that occurred, you know, and it, it, it's it was undeniable. And so it's, you know, there's, as you've said, there's a time for medication and there's a time for, for counsel and, you know, or, or, but sometimes quality time will, is such a key component to get your kids what they need. And, uh, uh, and I watched it happen and that's how the book was born and kind of the 18 summers movement was born. That's just intentional quality. Super, super grassroots. Yeah. So you could put our, our whole book on the back of a paper napkin and I'm okay with that. But it's putting it to practice and reading the stories in the book of the other families, the sex successes they've had and the unfoldings and what their kids have brought up to them on these these days. It's just uh, it doesn't have to be complicated, but the results yeah. can be. Seen. So so the board meeting is every 90 days then. Every 90 days, half a day, one on one intermittent tech fasting, doing Love something that. of our kids. Traditions. Now, as the boys get older, we're still doing it once a quarter, but we've told them, hey, as you guys move on, we might only be spending a day a year one-on-one with you. But imagine, I mean, now being 49, losing my dad last year, I couldn't imagine if from age of 21 to 48, I'd had a day a year just one-on-one with my father. I didn't have that. Yeah. Um, so the, the to really harness that one-on-one time. So we have adult clients, uh, clients with adult children that they they'll spend, fly to their children. They'll fly to their children wherever they are in the world for a one-on-one day with them every year. And that one day ties together the relationship stronger for the rest of the year. And we have grandparents that do this, that implement it with their grandchildren or aunts and uncles that implement it with their nephews. Like, it's just really cool to see how everyone like kind of tailors it to what, where they're at in life with the children that are in their life. Man, that is powerful because, uh, you know, I think that's probably the thing that gets missed the most is the attention uh, when when you're with your kids, because it's pulled in so many different directions. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, we could literally work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we're constantly pulled in so many directions. And to just carve out that sacred time, I know my wife and I, um, we, we do our very best to do date night. I love to set it and forget it. Like, you know, Wednesday, whatever, whatever day you choose, I think that's powerful. And then, um, I've tried to take my kids on trips uh, for every birthday. So we have like these cool memories where it's just one-on-one and, and I'm like you, uh, Jim, I, I came into my, my wife, she had, I came with two kids and she had her son who was about five. And it was the same scenario where she had to fight for custody and a similar story to Jamie's. And uh, it took a lot of years to build up trust. Um, and just to, to get him now where he calls me dad. And it's just like, we have a really good relationship, but it did. It took those one-on-one times where, uh, we had to be intentional or I had to be intentional in that relationship. So, man, I did too. You know, that's a powerful point that I, I will hit on if, it the boys called these when these started these board meetings they were called gym days. Gym days. I didn't okay. You know the and something we've learned doing foster care. It's it feels great for the boys what they call me dad and I'm sure you experienced the same thing. You know, I have both adopted and biological children. I can honestly say under any sort of testing, I can't tell the difference. You know, you love a child and totally. Yep. Yeah. But earning the name dad, I had to realize at a young age, I mean, getting into this, the word dad doesn't always have a good definition to it for some kids and what they've been through. And you want to redefine it before you get called that again. Totally. Foster kids and adopted children. And and I'm glad they took their time to say that, you know, and and it meant that much more because the word had been redefined to them because it wasn't a word with good memory. And, and I think if, if people will be patient with that word and really appreciate it, it's a, uh, it's a different level if you, if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. No, it, it is. It's uh, it, it's earned, you know, instead of, you know, when you're the biological father, it's just like, well, it's given yeah. to you. There's, there's no earning behind it almost. Uh, yeah. It almost is that much more impactful when it comes from a, a non-biological kid who there is no difference in. Yeah, it's so cool. Well, man. Yeah, it's so funny because I'm like, you know, people think that it's a second, a second place or a second class. And I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure that it almost makes it the 
the favorite person <laughs> because to, you had to, you know, work harder and you had, to, it's, it's just, it's very, it's very chosen, you know? And I, and I think that the boys know how, what a big deal it was that they, he didn't just fall in love with me. He also fell in love with them, like three people all at the same time. That's pretty amazing. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And you know, Jim, you wouldn't have had it any other way. I mean, I'm sure no. you, you look at that and I, I, sometimes my wife thanks me. She's like, I'm so appreciative that you're, you're Dom's dad. And I'm, I'm like, no, no, it, it, I'm actually the one who is the most grateful. It had, it, it's, it's more of a gift to me than, than I was to him is the way I feel about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I had always had this dream of having four kids and at the age I was getting, I said, well, that probably won't happen. And now I'm actually at five kids and I'm going, wow, I got over delivered. The universe is like, let me show you this funny. You know what I mean? And I just feel, I mean, you've seen us together. I, I think we're the luckiest blended family in the world, you know, tied with you, of course, you know yeah. what I mean? But it's, it's just blended so well. And I think you hit on the word, Reagan. It's just, you got to have some intentionality and really be inspired to do that. And I think all of us on this call were, and it doesn't have to be complicated. There's yeah. a couple of, of principles to put into place and I think if you do, things will fall into place. Yeah, I love that. Well, I think that's a really good um, place to end for now. Um, I, we got to have more conversations about this. And I'm so appreciative of you guys taking the time to um, be on the show and to, you know, so our community can get a chance to experience you. What's the best way for people to get in touch? 18summers.com is the best place and that you can find all of our socials and our book on Amazon is all right there. We also have a podcast that uh, you'll be. We've had Ray and Archibald, the pet side master on. <laughs> yeah. And that's also, you can find that under 18 summers. So it's all in that one place. Okay. And grab their book. And then um, I want to see you guys in the November event. So is there kind of a, um, like a, an application process that people would go through to, to sign up for the event in November. There it is. And, and you can inquire about that on the website. We'll be putting that up and then the application joining, will be sent out. Yeah. Joining the, um, our email list is probably the best way to stay on the, on the, uh, updates. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Forward awesome. swing, I was coming up with all sorts of words. You didn't take all your <laughs> peptides today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, well, you guys are amazing. So thanks so much for all the great work you're doing. Uh, and for those of you who love the show, make sure you share it with your friends, family, loved ones, anyone with a family. I think you, you pretty much should feel crappy if you don't share it with them. So, <laughs> but uh, go to 18summers.com. Jim, Jamie, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks so much, Reagan. Great to see you.